Got another set of questions on the transition elements topic. So the double figures, number 10. So as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video. So just click on that, try the questions, and then play the video for the answers. Okay, so it's a good one, this one, because the nickel chemistry is not on OCRA. Not sure about other exam boards, but it's not on OCRA. So this is a really good test of your understanding and application of what you do need to know. So we've got some information about uh, nickel 2 sulfate. When it's dissolved in water, it's reacted with various things. And for the first part, we've got to come up with the formulae for C, D and E. So C has been formed when nickel 2 sulfate has been dissolved in water, 6 coordinate. So this is the hexa aqua nickel 2 complex. So there's the answer there. So six water ligands surrounding this nickel two plus ion. Don't forget your charge. So solid D now, aqueous potassium hydroxide is added to nickel two sulfate. So it's effectively been added to this and we get solid D. So two options, but both are called nickel two hydroxide. So you can either give the simplified formula or you can give the full formula. And the final one, it's a little bit trickier this one. So the cyanide ions from the aqueous potassium cyanide are going to react with the hexa aqua nickel 2 ion from the nickel 2 sulfate solution and we get this four coordinate complex so this is going to be nickel 2 cyanide and there's four cyanide ions around it so there's the formula there i'll just explain the charge so remember we we're dealing with nickel in its two plus state each cyanide ion has a one minus charge we've got four of them so the overall charge in this ion is two minus Okay, so moving on to the equations now in part two. I'll deal with the type of reaction first and then I'll give you both versions of the equation. So we've got a precipitate D, so this is a precipitation reaction. Remember we said it was nickel 2 hydroxide. So you can either give this simplified version of the equation, that's absolutely fine. Or you can give the full equation, which looks like that. And for the second equation, formation of complex E, so that's the cyanide complex of nickel 2, we've got to give this equation, there's no option other than that one, and the type of reaction is ligand substitution. Moving on to part B now, so we've got to apply our shapes knowledge to this one. Obviously this is going to be linear with that bond angle of 180 degrees. Next part, we've got to justify that this is a redox reaction. So all I've done here is I've turned the information in that uh, couple of sentences there into this unbalanced equation. We'll deal with the full equation in this part, but this is enough to get us uh, the answer to, the, to this part of the question. So using oxidation numbers, show that this is redox. So if we think about gold at the start, it's in its zero oxidation state, whereas in the uh, complex, it's in its plus one oxidation state. I'll just explain why it's plus one. So we know the cyanide ion is one minus. There's two of them, so two minus from these two. So to be left with an overall one minus charge on the complex, this has to be plus one. So gold has been oxidized. Its oxidation has gone up from zero to plus one. Obviously in the exam, you would need to write oxidation number there. Just don't just put O-N. So we'll deal with the reduction process now. So if we look at the oxygen in O2, it's got a zero oxidation state. Each of those oxygens is zero, whereas in the OH minus ion, it's negative two. Okay, so the next part I would say is quite tricky. So there's the equation again. I'll put an extra zero there. I'll explain that in a second. Well, basically we're gonna use oxidation number changes to balance this equation. So if we think about the gold, it's changed from zero to plus one. So there's a change of one. The extra zero is there because there's two oxygens here, both at oxidation state zero. This is the only oxygen containing product. So both of these have, must have gone to minus two. So that's a total change of four. So we've got an increase of one, but a decrease of four because two have gone from zero to minus two. Hope that makes sense. So to deal with that, we need four in front of the gold species. So now we've got an overall increase of four. So each of those golds has gone from zero to plus one, and that matches the total decrease of four. 
Now we've done that, it gets a little bit easier. So if we think about the cyanide ions next, so this four in front of the complex, obviously there's two within the complex, so we need eight Cn minus ions. We can use overall charges now to get the OH minus ions balanced. So we've got eight minus overall on the left, four minus, so we need another four minus from this, so there's a four in front of the OH minus ions. And then we need to just finish off and do the H2Os. So we've got four H's on the right. There's only two on the left at the moment. So we need a two in front of the H2O. I'll just spend a couple of seconds explaining the um, overall oxidation number change for the oxygen, just for revision purposes, I suppose. So you notice two, um, two minus twos have appeared above the O's and the H2O. So there's two of them because there's two balancing the, the water. So each one starts at minus two and they're still at minus two. So two of the four are still at minus two, whereas these two have changed down to minus two and that gives you that overall change in oxidation number balancing out. I hope that made sense. So moving on to the last bit, you can see I've annotated it already. So I'll obviously explain that as I go through the answer. So we've got to come up with the reduction half equation. We've got the oxidation half equation. So basically what we need to do is look at the overall equation and see what we've already got. And obviously what's missing is definitely going to be featuring in the other half equation. And if we notice here, I've said too many H2O. So we've got to get rid of some H2O because the overall equation only has two, whereas we've got three in that one. And obviously there's no H plus ions in the overall equation. So we need to get rid of those and obviously the electrons need to go as well. So you'll see the first thing that's missing is ClO minus. We haven't got any given yet, so that's gonna feature in this reduction equation. We only want two H2Os in the overall equation. We've got three in the oxidation equation, so if we have an H2O on the right-hand side of the reduction half equation, that will enable the H2Os to get to where they need to be. We need to get rid of these two H plus ions and these two electrons, so they're going to feature on the left of the reduction equation. And the only other thing missing is the Cl minus ion, so obviously that's going to feature in this one. So that's the answer there. So definitely a question of two halves, that one. The first half, I hope you found that fairly straightforward. Obviously the second part, not so. So well done if you got those right.